Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another season of Nebraska University football. I'm Mike Tapps, along with Ollie Smith from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, where the Nebraska Cornhuskers open the season against Texas Christian University of Fort Worth. Once again, it's our privilege to have with us former Hastings High head football coach, Ollie Smith. And Ollie, the Huskers under a little pressure, having been picked by a consensus as one of the top teams, if not the top team in the nation, and a little bit tougher opener than they've had in the past. Yes, Mike, we're mighty proud of the University of Nebraska to attain such a lofty rating this early in the season, but I'm sure that Texas Christian would like nothing better than to change the style of the rating right after today's ball game. The weather, of course, will be a factor in this ball game. It's very bad, and perhaps one of the worst opening days in the University of Nebraska history. A steady rain has been falling throughout the morning and is still falling and probably will continue to do so throughout the course of this contest. Here now are the starting lineups. We'll give the offensive lineups to you, then catch you with the defense as the game progresses. First of all, for the TCU football squad, at left end will be Sonny Campbell. He's a 194-pound junior from Fort Worth. Instead of saying left end, let's give the correct reading and make it tight end. At the tight tackle or tee tackle will be Bobby Barker, a senior from Lamarck, Texas, a 201-pounder. At the tight guard spot, Russ Stout, a 200-pound senior from Port Arthur, Texas. At center in the ballgame this afternoon, Jim Nifa, a 231-pound junior from Fort Worth. At the power guard spot will be number... 62, Butch Gilliam, a junior from Belton, Texas, weighing 219 pounds. At the power tackle spot, Aiden Citra. He's a 200-pound junior from Austin, Texas. And at the power end spot will be Joe Ball, a senior from Graham, weighing 203 pounds. At quarterback this afternoon, or at least getting the starting nod, will be a letterman, Kent Nix by name. He's a senior, 185 pounds from Corpus Christi. At the running back spot, number 21, Steve Landon. He's a sophomore from Waco, Texas, won 192 pounds. At the wing back spot will be Dave Smith, a six-foot junior, 198-pounder from Fort Worth. And at fullback will either be Kenny Post, a sophomore from El Campo, 195-pounder, or one of the four captains on the squad, Ernie Bayer, a 200-pound senior from Cameron, the only position still in doubt as the ball game will get underway. For the University of Nebraska at left end, Tony Jeter, a 227-pound senior from Weirton, West Virginia. At left tackle, Dennis Carlson, a 229-pound senior from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Left guard will be Laverne Allers, a junior from Davenport, Iowa, weighing 209. At center, Duncan Drum, a senior, 219 pounds from Fremont, Nebraska. Wayne Malin, a sophomore, a 239-pounder from Bay City, Michigan. The only starting sophomore in the offensive lineup will be at right guard. At right tackle will be Jim Brown, a 249-pound senior from Omaha. And at right end, Freeman White, a 221-pound senior from Detroit, Michigan. At quarterback, a sophomore from Omaha, Bob Churchett, weighing 176 pounds. Ron Kirkland will be at left halfback, a 213-pound senior from West Bend, Wisconsin. At right halfback, Harry Wilson, a junior, 196-pounder from Steubenville, Ohio. And at fullback, Frankie Solich, a senior from Cleveland, Ohio, weighing 158 pounds. This is only the second meeting of all time between these two schools. The first meeting on the same field back in 1951 when the Frogs took a 28-7 victory from the Cornhuskers minus Bobby Reynolds back in 1951. So this is meeting number two between the Frogs and the Cornhuskers, and we'll watch the kickoff and subsequent play-by-play -play now. Getting ready to kick off for the TCU Horn Frogs is Donnie Gibbs, 184-pound sophomore from Tyler, Texas. TCU lost the flip of the coin. The Cornhuskers electing to receive. The Frogs with the remaining option defend the North Goal. There's a slight breeze, but not very much. It won't be that much of a factor. The Sun trying to get through, and it will have as difficult a job as the Frogs will trying to get through that Husker black shirt forward wall. So we'll see what happens as the 1965 season gets underway. Donnie Gibbs to kick off. Harry Wilson on the far side. Ron Kirkland to the near side. Frankie Solich down the middle, and the kick is a high one. That's Solich on the goal line. To the 10. To the 15. Still on his feet. Brought down as he crosses the 20-yard line. It'll be approximately the 21-yard line. TCU will have 
the defense of Larry Perry and Doyle Johnson at ends, Ronnie Nixon and Danny Cross at the tackles, Porter Williams and Gary Cooper at the guards, E.A. Gresham and Bobby Nelson at the linebacking spots, and Johnny Richards, Dan Jones, and Frank Polak in the defensive secondary. From the 22, Nebraska's ball, split both ends, slot the right halfback. And Churchett on the draw play to Solich. Solich is hit at the 24-yard line, and E.A. Gresham, who's one of the top sophomores on the TCU squad, is in there to make the stop. Gresham, a subject of intensive recruiting, and may be one of the few players on the Frog squad to go both ways. A sophomore, watch for him on your screen. He'll be wearing number 55. Second down, eight. Again, that slot formation. A pick to Kirkland, and Nebraska was guilty of having a back in motion, and Kirkland's five-yard jaunt will be nullified. And, Ollie, this is typical of an opening game, I think. Yes, it is, Mike. Uh, until they take a few bumps and jars and bruises and get settled down, you have to see this kind of thing happen in any ball game. So the first penalty of the year liable to be coming up against the University of Nebraska. And five yards for illegal procedure. It'll be second down and approximately 13 yards to go now for the Nebraska Cornhuskers as the ball has moved inside the 20 and it's placed down at the 19-yard line. So the down remains the same and the yardage will be 12. Jeter to the near side, White to the far side, and Wilson in the slot to the right side. And here's Wilson, power sweeping to the near side, and he's brought down at the 20. Fine pursuit by the Frogs that time. E.A. Gresham makes the initial stop in helping out number 72, Ronnie Nixon. Nixon, along with defensive end Doyle Johnson, are the only two defensive regulars back from last year. That's in the forward wall. TCU very proud of their defensive secondary. John Richards, Dan Jones, and Frank Horak, all of whom were starters a year ago. So the Frogs returned five defensive starters from the club that won four and lost six in the Southwest Conference a year ago. Third down play, and still about 12 yards to go. Slot to the right side, split the left end, and Churchett wants the throw, man is open. It's complete first down for Nebraska, and with a clean and wide, he drives three of them along. He goes across the 35 and gets first down Nebraska at the 37-yard line. Stop again finally for TCU, John Richards. Last year, White caught 17 passes for 338 yards and two touchdowns. And only his superior height and weight was shown to great advantage on that last pass. Yes, Mike, it appears as if Nebraska is going to use uh, White and Jeter both as split ends many times as they have been doing so far. Jeter is in tight this time, and the handoff goes to Pete Tatman, a junior from North Platte, Nebraska, who jackknifes to approximately the 40-yard line at the 41. He's nailed. Once again, Ronnie Nixon in on the stop. E.A. Gresham also helping out. And credit Larry Perry, the defensive end, with a stop, too. Second down, the Huskers need seven. The ball spotted at the red 41-yard line. Needless to say, the Huskers are in the dark jerseys on your screen, and TCU and white, their colors being purple and white. Both ends are split, and Wilson's in the slot to the right side on the second down attempt. Inside, that's Solich alternating with Patman, and Solich finds room to the 44-yard line, just shy of the 45. Number 72, Ronnie Nixon again out of that pileup, along with a defensive linebacker, Bobby Nelson, number 53. Third down, and approximately five. Let's call it about four and a half to go. Nebraska inserts Kelly Peterson at center, replacing Duncan Drum on this third down try. Solich, you'll remember last year, was the leading ground gainer on the squad with 444 yards. Put the right end. Gretchen Keith has first down, catches out, and out of bounds goes Ron Kirkland across the 50 to the TCU 47 yard line. Making the stop across the way, safety man Frank Morak. First down at the 46 is where they're going to spot it. And Ollie, the Huskers are starting this season where they left off last season with a punishing ground game. It would appear as much. However, a minute ago, too, the, place, uh, the pleasing thing was when they needed some extra yards, they were able to find Freeman White on the pass. White has split far to the right. To the bottom of your screen will be Jeter. Wilson is in the slot. TCU in a seven-man line. Churches options beautifully. Solich drops the ball. He's hit. Spins loose and is hit by five white shirts. And the first man to really bury him is one of the four captains, Gary Cooper, the left guard for the TCU Frogs. Loss on the play. Ali, a fine job by Churchett, but once again, the, the day which will 
make itself felt because of the wet weather, I think Frank never really had the handle of that ball. No, he didn't. Uh, the pitch was good, and he had the ball uh, into his hands, and there appeared to be an opening where he could go places, but uh, this uh, ball's going to be pretty slippery out here on the wet grass. Second down, 15. Huskers at their own 49. Again, they operate from a double slot, the first time we've seen that this afternoon. And Churchick makes the draw. Fires to Jeter, who's got it. He's flipped away from the tackler and is dropped down at the TCU 40. And Churchick is two for two in the air and making the stop Johnny Richards and one of the uh, four captains, Dan Jones, from the two halfback spots. It's not a first down, but the third down tray, try now will be a lot easier than it would have been if that pass had been incomplete. Jeter last year caught 18 passes for 219 yards. So between White and Jeter, 35 receptions, and both of them have been picked highly on All-American preseason picks. Third down, inside the 40 at the 39-yard line, the deepest penetration of the ball game. TCU has not had the ball yet. Slot right, split the left end. Inside handoff to Wilson, it's going to be close. And Ali, the first uh, second guess of the day comes up. It's going to be fourth down and about a yard and a half for the Nebraska Cornhuskers from the 37-yard line. And we'll see if Coach Devaney will call for Bob Churches to go for it. Out of the ball game, so much Pete Patman comes in, and the fans want them to go for it, and that's what they're going to do. And the Frogs will move into a seven-man line. Split the right end, the rest of the team in tight. Churchett calling for quiet. Churchett keeps. Switches that ball to Kirkland. He's got the first down. He's inside the TCU 30-yard line. Making the sophomore TCU is Bobby Nelson, number 53, and Frank Polak to defensive safety, and the Frogs are back on their heels at their own 27. And remember, this drive started at the Nebraska 21. 9-14 remaining in the first quarter, and TCU hasn't had the ball yet. Ball at the hash mark from that far side, and White is split to the short side of the field. The rest of the team in tight. Roll out to the right side, and a pass going deep, a touchdown for Nebraska. Raymond White to Bob Churchett, 27 yards, and Nebraska, the first time they had their hands on the ball, lead 6-0. Beautiful pass and a beautiful move. Mike, that was a tremendous pass play. I think uh, the indication of the fact that Nebraska is proud of their number one rating came a minute ago when they decided to go for that fourth down when they only had a yard or two to go. I think they feel that they can get the job done, and certainly it appears as if they were able to. Now Larry Wahos will attempt the extra point. Wahos did none of the extra point kicking a year ago. Ball is down. It's up. Looks good from here. The official signal is good. Time out on the field. 8.56 remaining in the first period. And the Huskers lead the ball 7 to nothing. Larry Wahos will kick off for the University of Nebraska. And TCU will have their hands on the ball for the first time. And Landon, a sophomore at the 10-yard line, hit. Hit again and drop. Lynn Stechfile and Walt Fine, the two boys who dropped the black ball carrier. And the ball is spotted at the TCU 19-yard line. Move it back at the 18-yard line. Let's have it first down. And they'll operate now with a backfield of Kent Nick, Steve Landon, Bill Smith, and Post. Kenny Post, two sophomores in the start and quarterback. Kent Nix, who was injured quite a bit of the year, uh, quite a bit of the year, last year. Wing back to the right side. And the fullback coach picked up the middle for two. Mike Kennedy is the first man to hit him, number 69, a tremendous linebacker. Also in on the stop was Carol Fifth. So make it second down. TCU needs eight from their own 19-yard line. Kent Nix, the quarterback. Nick who's called one of the finest arms ever to play at TCU. He broke all of the freshman passing records in 1962 and was a starter last year until he hurt his knee in the first game against Kansas. And the pitch to Landon. Landon hit it to 24. The gain is four, and he was almost brought down in the backfield on a fine defensive maneuver by Howell, but he was able to spin loose and move the ball forward to the 24-yard line, where it'll be third and three yards to go. And a fine move that time by Bill Howes, who really had landed in trouble back in the broad backfield. Yes, at least he slowed him up and made him cut back into where the other pursuers were able to come in and get to him, Mike. Big play for TCU, third and beating a little over three yards. Smith on the wing. And 
this is the fullback, and he's going nowhere. Lynn Sprinkwile and Cheryl Stiff with Walt Barnes helping out. Drop the ball carrier at the 25. TCU has run out of bounds. It's fourth down, about two and a half yards to go. And Donnie Gibbs, the putter, enters the ball game. No statistics on Gibbs. He's a sophomore. He replaces Kent Nick. And this releases Larry Waffles to safety at about his own 35. What breeze there is will be at the back of Donnie Gibbs as he punches. We await the snap. Good pass from center. And Gibbs gets it away, and he booms one out of there. A fine high spiral with Waffles takes. Giving ground. Needs help. Looks for the wall. Finds it. He's up there. And he made it all the way. Cuts back in and is brought down at the TCU 44. And the boy who cut it, Johnny Gibbs, was the man who made the tackle. And the Huskers will have good field position on the TCU 44 yard line. Mike, it's always interesting to watch the defensive team whenever the offense is forced into a punting situation, and you can tell after their first maneuver what they're trying to set up. And in this case, after the initial block, you can see the boys all peeling off down to the east sideline there, and we're just sure of a run back down that side, and, and that's what developed a real fine one. So the Husker offense now, split the right end right, the rest of the team remains in tight. Circuit Keith, tremendous hole. Fumbles the ball out of bounds, but the Huskers will have it. That time, Ollie, Ron Kirkland, his trailer got ahead. I think he was looking to throw the block, and I, I don't think he had any idea that the ball would be picked to him since Kirkland was running out of room at that sideline. I believe so, too, and it, uh, the trailer man, of course, has to stay back into the outside, but there wasn't any room to get that done in that case. Second down, about three now, with Nebraska owning possession at the TCU 36. White has split far to the side. Kirkland, look at him go. He's got the first down at the broad 30 yard line. Although he was challenged in the backfield, he was able to spin loose. Doyle Johnson slowed him up, and it was John Richards who made the final stop, but not before the Huskers had gained another first down with six minutes remaining in this first quarter. Well, Ali, I don't know if they can score every time they get the ball, but uh, apparently no one has told them this. Uh, that's good. They seem to be on the march again. From the 30-yard line now, Kirchick to Solich, and he gets short yardage. Trapped as he hit the line of scrimmage by number 61, Gary Cooper, and helped out by Ronnie Nixon. The gain is two, just inside the 30, to the 28-yard line. The strong point in this TCU team was expected to be their defensive secondary, where all three starters return, but the Huskers have hit three for three in the passing lane, one of them for a 29-yard touchdown. White has split to the far side in this particular offensive alignment. Kirkland on the power sweep. And he is going to be bounced out of bounds in the vicinity of the 25 or 26 yard line. Polak made the initial contact. Dan Jones helping out. And so was number 82, Doyle Johnson, the defensive end. So the Huskers face third and five, a little over five, with a passing situation perhaps coming up. And slightly more than five minutes remaining in the first quarter. TCU has 19 lettermen back this year, but it's an inexperienced team. 23 sophomores listed among the top 45 players. And they'll play Nebraska again next year, opening the season here in Lincoln. Jump pass. Land in. Complete the white for first down. Ali, even a little bit of a throw offense works in, but White running a slant pattern that time and Kirkland getting in perfectly. Yes, Mike, on both other occasions, on the two, uh, the first two occasions, when Jeter and White were both split out, they used a look-in pattern. Here was a little slant in, and on the touchdown pass, he made the uh, the quick move right by the defender. TCU apparently has a lot of confidence in their secondary men because they're trying one-on-one -on -one coverage, and these two uh, ends are making it tough for them to cover. First down, Huskers. Six to Harry Wilson, and Wilson is going to be brought down for a loss. That time they had it well covered. And Larry Perry, number 81, along with Ronnie Nixon, the defensive tackle, were in there to stop the ball carrier for a loss at the 20, a loss of about three, and it'll be second down and 13 yards to go. This TCU ball club, you know, rates third in Southwest Conference history in the matter of championships. The Dogs have won seven outright and shared another. Their last title was back in 1959 when they shared the top spot with Texas and Arkansas. They opened the season against the University of Kansas every year since 1944. They stay in the Big Eight. Church is throwing and White got it. The ball is going to be spotted at about the 11-yard line. And Ali, I believe, that's five for five now for Church. That's true. He threaded the needle on that one. 
It is not a first down, but once again, it makes that third down play a lot easier. TCU substitutes Rick Westbrook, a defensive halfback. He's going to come into the linebacker spot in reality, and Nelson comes out. Third down and five. The ball spotted at the TCU 11. They have to reach the six, just outside the six, to get this first down. 3.14 remaining in the first quarter. Nebraska has completely dominated this ball game. Church expires! Touchdown! <laughs> plays, not counting their kick. They trail 13 to nothing, and attempting the extra point will be Wahoo. Ball down, the kick is up. Good. 307 remaining in the first quarter. It's Nebraska 14, TCU nothing. The first Nebraska drive went some 79 yards, and this Nebraska drive covered some 47 yards. Touchdown passes being the payoff. Oh, that's going to be a hard one to have them. Horak has it at the 10. Across the 20 to the 23 yard line. And the Fogs have possession once again. And Ollie, they took what breeze there was at the beginning of the ball game, but they haven't had the ball long enough or out far enough to be able to throw that ball at all. No, they've had very poor field position so far, Mike. Uh, this has been due to a real good uh, job of uh, coverage by the university on the kickoffs. But uh, TCU will probably uh, do better as they get better field position. Now we play, and it's Nick to the fullback, close across the 25. One thing that uh, comes to our mind very quickly, Ollie, is the fact that the Nebraska defensive secondary with two newcomers and Marv Mueller and Kay Carson. Carson, of course, not a newcomer, but he didn't play very much. Well, they still haven't been tested because nobody's done that far. No, as yet, uh, we don't know for sure whether they're good defensive secondary men or not. We know Wahoo, of course, is a safety man, was outstanding a year ago. Second down, the Frogs need six, just outside their own 25. Wing back to the near side is Dave Smith. And again, the fullback post, he breaks into the secondary. Coming to the near side, one step on the midfield, 45, 40 yard line. Finally run out of bounds. A fine run by Post to attack the left side, reversed his field, came back to the near side, and pounded all the way to the Nebraska 40-yard line before he was rushed out of bounds. And Ollie, there was a very fine run by Post, who threaded his way through a broken field very well. Yes, uh, we're sure watching the ball game that TCU has a real fine ball club, Mike, and they're not going to give up, uh, even though the university's got a couple touchdowns on them. I'm sure we'll see quite a bit of offense out of them before the afternoon's over. Sonny Campbell, by the way, who is their key end, has not uh, been thrown to yet, and he is, of course, one of the finest ends in the conference. We probably will see that as the game rolls along. Whoa! Landon, the second man through, is hit by about five. He didn't have much chance. Langston Coleman, number 80, steals off it. There were quite a few others that helped in that uh, defensive line, notably John Strohmeyer, number 74. No game, second down, 10 yards to go. This Campbell, by the way, ranked second in the Southwest Conference last year, and he tied the TCU all-time single-season yardage record with 502. Observers at Texas question Field and Campbell could become the greatest pass catcher in school history. So it'll be interesting to watch him perform throughout the afternoon. Second down, 10, Kent Nick takes the snap, rolls left and has a lot of room, and he's going to run that ball, being chased by Mike Kennedy, and finally upended as he crosses the 35-yard line. Ollie was started out as a pass pattern, turned into a fine running play, as Nick, with two blockers out front, was able to turn that corner in a hurry, and I think only Mike Kennedy's uh, pursuit kept Nick from going even further. I think Mike did a fine job in getting through that blocking to help on the uh, defensive work. Did a real good job of recovering, uh, Mike, because originally, actually, the defense broke down over on the right side of Nebraska's line, and he could have gone. Third down and two and a half. TCU at the Husker 35-yard line. Smith is out on the wing to the right side. The rest of the team in tight. And this is the fullback post. He's got the first down, and it's first and 10 at the 25. That's the second time Post has threaded his way into the Nebraska secondary. 
Making the stop for the Cornhuskers on that particular play was Billy Johnson, number 28. Bill, one of the defensive regulars, along with Waffles last year, another regular, Ted Vactor, is suited up and probably won't play because of an injured knee. His place has been taken by Marv Mueller. Frogs first down at the Husker 25, and they've been impressive moving from their own 23-yard line. Wing to the left side this time, and Landon cuts through his hit. It'll be a very, very small game, and a penalty flag offsides against TCU. The Horn Frogs will flip-flop that line, which means that the power side won't always line up on the same side of center. The same is true of the T side. And of course, we'll move that wing back around. We have not seen a split end or a flanker as yet. They've used the conventional wing T. Offsides is going to be refused. The gain was nothing. It'll be second and 10 from the 25-yard line. Coach Bob Devaney, of course, the winningest coach in the nation as far as active coaches are concerned. Coming into this season, Devaney had won 63. He'd lost 15 and five ties. But Nebraska's record is even better. It's 28 and five. And oddly, oddly enough, he's trying to break a two-game losing streak here. Yeah, that's true. To the wing, right side is Dave Smith. Nix will throw for the first time, if he can. Fires, oh, he didn't have any idea where he wanted to throw that, and it was almost picked off. Standing side by side were Wahos and Kay Carson, Dolly, and uh, they couldn't get together because that ball was thrown to either one of them in a hurry. Yes, they both apparently were uh, using their keys well, though, because when the end left the line of scrimmage to come get the pass, why, both boys had dropped back into the area. First quarter over, Nebraska 14, Pizza you nothing. Second period of play, and Kent Nix has just thrown his first pass. Last year, he completed 51 out of 117 for 624 yards, four touchdowns, completing 43%, but he had 15 interceptions. And that has been one of the reasons Kent Nix has not been an outstanding passer. He is prone to throw that interception. Now he's being rushed off his feet. Let's see if he's going to get it away. He better hurry. Now he's going to run that ball. Still running, still going, and he's going to be close for the first down. And Kent Nix gave the crowd quite some razzle-dazzle, Ali. He ran just about everywhere except where the cheerleaders were. And he ends up close to the first down at the Nebraska 15-yard line. And it looks to be... Close enough for a measurement, although from here it may be just a bit short. On your initial charge on a pass rush, if you don't get to the man, very often this thing happens. Again, the uh, the primary line of defense broke down, so that when Nick found this opening, he was able to move up to this uh, either first and ten or very close to first and ten. Ollie, I know that when you were coaching football, it was a dread to see a quarterback carrying a ball like Nick was doing on that particular play, like a hot dog. The ball was flopping all over. It. If, if anyone could have got a square shot at him, but he was using his feet so well that uh, nobody got the good, clean shot at him. Well, the first down measurement shows that TCU will be short, and here is a fourth down play with the Frogs needing less than a yard. In fact, it looks to be about a foot. And it was a broken play as Nix could not find a receiver, and he turned into a very fine game. Fourth down and inches to go. The defensive team will be tested here. Of course, it's an awful lot to expect a defensive team to stop an offensive ball club with only a foot to go. But we'll see. We've seen it happen before. Remembering down at Oklahoma last year when the Black Shirts did such a tremendous job. Full back post, and Ali, he appears to hear from here that he did have the necessary momentum to carry him to the first down marker. Yes, it looks like he moved across the 15-yard line, which would give him the first and 10. The Nebraska right tackle, Dick Zapp, almost jumped out offside. No measurement here. They've given the Frogs the first down, squarely at the 15-yard line. 14 minutes remaining in the second period, and TCU threatening at the Nebraska 15, although they trail 14 to nothing. The Huskers have scored every time they've had the ball, only two occasions, and both of them were long drives. This is the mark of a good football team to be able to sustain the long drive. Now let's see if the Frogs can do it, because they started at their own 23, you'll remember, on this particular movement downfield. Second man through Landon, and he's figure figure cut out from under him, and uh, Ollie Wall Barnes was on the ground when he got that arm out enough to trip Landon as he went by. And the gain was held to three yards. It could have been more. 
Yes, and once again, Mike, that uh, hole seemed to open on the right side of the Nebraska line. They're using a belly series, a right series, where he takes the man in tight and giving it to this, uh, the second man through this a little bit wider, and they found a hole there several times now. Second down, seven, the ball resting at the Huskers' 12-yard line. Nebraska in that defensive line as Howe, Strohmeyer, Barnes, Zapp, and Coleman. Kennedy and Sankbile are the defensive linebackers. TCU sets them down. David Smith on the wing to the left has not been a ball carrier yet. Although we know that uh, they are plays designed. This is the fullback Post, and he's hit at about the 10-yard line, very short yardage. Post tried to cut back after hitting wide, tried to move back up the middle. Walt Barnes was there, Sinkfile was there, and so was that. And the ball will be spotted at the 10, leaving TCU five yards short of the first down, and third down coming up. Post is a sophomore. He has beaten out one of the four captains, Ernest Bayer, who is the leading ground gainer of those returning. Bayer had 133 yards last year. It wasn't the best mark on the squad, but it is the best of those returning. So Post is a very highly regarded sophomore. Smith on the wing, third down five. Nick wants to throw, fires over the middle. Man was there and he fell down. Ollie, the man was there and he fell down. It was Joe Ball, the power end. And his feet went right out from under him just as he tried to grab that pass. Yes, Mike, and the uh, secondary had lost him. He wasn't covered. Uh, the sun isn't shining on us today, but maybe the gods are. <laughs> of course, uh, Nebraska has uh, had two touchdown passes, but the ground has nothing to do with the touchdown passes that Freeman White has caught because he hasn't been anywhere near the ground when he's caught them. Maybe that was the trouble with Joe Ball on that particular play. He tried to stay on the ground to catch it. Well, a big play now. It's going to be fourth down, and the Frogs have really split their team this time. Halfback wide right, split the left end. Kent next needing five yards. is back to pass. Fires deep into the corner, and it is caught. And Sonny Campbell has scored for TCU. Sonny Campbell, who last year tied an all-time single-season Receiving mark for TCU and was second only to All-American Lee Elkins has just caught his first pass and it's a touchdown. And uh, Ollie on the near side, they went after Kay Carstens, a comparative rookie in that defensive secondary who was covering Sonny Campbell. Yes, it looked like Kay was doing a pretty good job of initial coverage too, but uh, I don't know, field conditions might make a little difference. At least Campbell did a good job and scored on the play. Now the extra point and Bruce Alford, who leads the club last year, led it in scoring. He was 10 for 10 in the extra point department last year with four field goals and 22 points, has converted for the first time this year, and with 12 minutes and four seconds remaining, it's Nebraska 14 and TCU 7. We're underway, and here is Bruce Alford. He really put his toe into one, and it's so much at the 10. Brought down. The Frogs are waiting for him across the 25 to the 28-yard line. Make it the 27-yard line. And TCU tackler being number 18, Danny Jones. Well, Holly, here we go again. Every time the Cornhuskers have had the ball, they've had to put on a long drive, and then they've gotten a touchdown in spectacular fashion. But we've just seen the Frogs cover 77 yards of their own, so we're in, I think, for a very entertaining afternoon. It seems like we would be. Slot to the right side, Churchich opts him to the right side and pitches the ball to Frankie Solich and he gets to the 30-yard line. There was split T, and a lot of times you'll see that with the split T option run to the weak side. And that's what happened that time with Churchich with the power side or slot side to the near side. And Churchich optioning the other way, pitching it back to Frank Solich, who now leads the ball game, and Pete Chapman comes in. We're liable to see Frankie Solich playing just about everywhere and anywhere this year. Uh, there's been talk about putting him on the flank, using him at a halfback, and of course he has played fullback. Tight T with the exception of the split right end. And the handoff goes to Harry Wilson, who spins away, fights his way to the sideline, finds five step maneuver. Wilson five stepping two of the frogs and finally being ushered off the field of play in the vicinity of the 37 or 38 yard line, but very close for a first down. We'll see if they measure. We saw a real fine piece of running there. He could have been thrown down there for just a yard or two, but uh, with two side steps, he made it up to almost a first and 10. It is not a first down, but the yardage is so close that the yard indicator or the down indicator is put right where the yardage marker is. So it's third and less than a yard for the University of Nebraska. Dennis Ritznowski is in the ball game at right end. The play goes in tight, however. 
and it, it is a first down. Ollie this Dennis Richnansky is a sophomore, but uh, they really have high regard for him here at the university, and during the spring, apparently he put on a fantastic display of catching passes. In the spring game, Mike, uh, it was one of the most outstanding things that I've seen in the way of pass catching here in the university stadium. He's a 186-pound sophomore, six feet tall from Clareton, Pennsylvania, so not a very tall pass catcher, but apparently has some fine moves, and it'll be interesting to watch him perform. Slot right. Jeter remains in the ball game. Kirchitz wants to throw. Looks for Ratsafi. He's going to overthrow everybody. Wilson almost got there. All right, then again, Ratsafi may have been the primary target, but when he was covered, and he was covered well, the throw went to Harry Wilson deep. Fine coverage that time by one of the defensive secondary, and that was Dan Jones riding him shoulder pad to shoulder pad downfield. That's a good pass pattern that split in. It cut in over the middle to draw the defensive secondary in and it sent Harry Wilson out wide to the sideline or down the sideline then. Second and ten, Nebraska. Haven't seen that draw play yet. Stolich is in the ball game now. Split the left end. Slot the right half back in the right end. Inside trap play. Kirkland goes across the 40 to the 43. TCU has Ronnie Nixon and number 77, Danny Cross tackling. E.A. Gresham, number 55, sophomore linebacker, gives a little assistance. And timeout on the field as one of the Frogs is down with 9.43 remaining in the first half. The score is Nebraska 14 and TCU 7. Freeman White back into the Nebraska lineup, third down and five yards to go. Pass to Wilson. He can't hold on to it. Well, when his playing career is over, Ollie, I know quite a few circuses who would like to have an act like that. Yes, that was quite a juggling act that he put, uh, put on there as he ran along. It's too bad he, uh, he had the first and ten nicely, but uh, now they'll be forced into a punting situation. Kelly Wilson, who last year came into his own toward the end of the year and had a tremendous cotton ball game, as you well remember, gained 303 yards. He caught 11 passes for 144 yards and one touchdown last year. So Ron Kirkland has come in to punt for the first time. Last year, Ron averaged 33 and 7 tenths yards per kick. Polak, a single safety for Texas Christian. Good pass in center. And the kick is away. Very high kick. Polak settling under, calling for the fair catch. Woo-hoo. Bodies colliding, but uh, Horak was able to take the catch. And it'll be first down, Texas Christian at their own 19-yard line. Well, Ali, this first game will set an all-time single-game attendance record at the University of Nebraska. The addition of 5,984 seats this past summer brings the total capacity down to 52,450. The record previous today was 49,013 against Oklahoma State last year. I think the interesting thing might be that uh, might be Mike that uh, most of those people are here too. They not only bought tickets, but they came out here to the rain to watch the ball game. TCU first down try. Quarterback to the fullback, and no game. Post going inside first, finding that pass block, slid to the outside, but was arrested at the line of scrimmage, and some fine defensive coverage by the defensive left end, Haug, and from the defensive secondary, Marv Mueller, a sophomore from Columbus, Nebraska. So it'll be second and ten, the ball remaining at the 19-yard line. Eight minutes and 28 seconds now remaining in the first half. Nebraska on top, 14-0, and then the Frogs coming back to make it a game at 14-7 right now. Wing back is David Smith to the right side. He started out as a tailback. And he's going to carry the ball for the first time and gets across the 25 or just to the 25-yard line. Larry Warholz was in there to make the stop. Smith started out as a tailback or running back. But when the first string wing back, Dean Updegraff, was injured, and by the way, he did not make the trip today, Smith was moved over and is playing a position just a wee bit more into him. This Kenny Post, who's run so well for the Frogs, has a brother who's playing at the University of Texas. So it must be quite a football family, at least uh, this part of it is. Third down trying about five now. TCU at the 24-yard line. They come up the middle and go nowhere. That's Post, and he got one to the 25 and perhaps to the 26-yard line. Mike Kennedy, along with Lynn Sinkbile, stopping the play. And it'll be fourth down, and here comes Donnie Gibbs into the TCU secondary, replacing Nick.
This is the second meeting, as we've mentioned, of these two clubs, and Nebraska against Southwest Conference opposition throughout the years is five and five. They have played everyone in the Southwest Conference, with the exception of Rice and Texas Tech throughout the years, looking for their sixth win in all-time play. Ooh, almost blocked, but Gibbs gets it away beautifully. Wahol takes it at the 40-yard line. Gibbs ground all the way back to the 35. Spins away. The wall is formed. If he can get one more block, he's still on his feet. And Larry Wahol returns to the 37-yard line on a beautiful play. There was some fine blocking there, but there was a lot of real good individual effort on Wahol's part on that particular return. They had him all the way back to the 35-yard line as he gave ground, trying to find that corridor up the near side. And what a job he did once he found that quarter and picked his way through to the 37. And Ollie, one thing the Frogs will probably work on next week is coverage of a punt because the Huskers have had two very fine returns. Yes, that's true. And it's rather interesting because on the uh, kickoffs, they've had uh, pretty good coverage. Good field position again for Nebraska. White is split down here to the short side of the field. Flow of the action goes the other way. And Churchish is almost... They might have fumbled. Let's check it now. Who's got it? Nebraska's got it. <laughs> Linebacker E.A. Gresham came out of the pileup with the ball, but the official says no, and uh, Churchich was almost decapitated as he ducked into the line of scrimmage. He was hit first by the defensive left guard Gary Cooper. The ball squared in three, and E.A. Gresham pounced upon it, but the official says no, that it will not be allowed to stand up. So it's second down for the University of Nebraska. They even gained yardage on that particular play, if you can call about a foot yardage. Second down, let's call it 10. Slot right, split Jeter to the left side. Churchett fires, and it's almost intercepted. Number 14, Johnny Richards, almost had his hands on it. A red flag, two red flags have gone down, and we'll see what that means. Ollie, it looks like the first major penalty of the year coming up, and it'll be against Nebraska, and uh, I didn't catch the, the signal, preliminary signal. I'm just noticing Nebraska boys backing up. I think the official just uh, came up with a holding signal. Almost intercepted by John Richards, who had his hands on it, let it get through. There's 15 yards. The down will remain the same at number two, but the Cornhuskers will have to scrimmage from their own 43-yard line now. 540 remaining on the first half, and it's been an exciting one. By the way, half times now under NCAA rules. The new rule is 20 minutes rather than 15. So let's see if the Huskers go to the air once again. Jeter left. White to the right side, Kirkland in the slot. Pass to White. Look at him, break loose. Frank Pollock finally brings him down. Not a first down, but once again, that third down play will be a lot easier. Dan Jones had him, but couldn't hold him. And Ollie Jones hit him a pretty good lick, and White was still able to get free and gain about 10 more yards after the initial contact was made. He hit him a real good blow, Mike. I think one of the things that uh, where I've seen improvement this year is after White and Jeter, either one uh, receives that ball, they're able to do a better job of running than they did a year ago. So instead of being about 20 to go, they now have two to go for the first down on the third down try. Jump pass over the middle. Beautiful catch. Red flag down. Jeter made a tremendous catch. Churchitz really didn't throw the ball well. He threw to Jeter's feet. What a catch. And now a penalty flag down. And it could be that the Huskers will be penalized again. We'll wait to see. I believe uh, they're signaling an offside. Naturally, the Frogs will take the penalty. Last year, Bob Churchitz led the conference. In passing, he completed 54 out of 102 for 893 yards. Seven touchdowns, he threw eight interceptions, and he started out at a much better pace this year. Of course, he'll play all ten games barring injury. Last year, you'll remember, he was only in nine games, having missed the Minnesota game completely and not playing too much against South Dakota. Offside penalty makes it third down and about seven. Church it to red flag. Holly, they may have put that ball forward. It looked like it, Mike. Uh, the, again, there's uh, good effort, and we uh, picked up what would be a first and ten, but I'm afraid that was a forward instead of a lateral. Holly, a question to somebody who's watched football for as many years as you have. On a play like that, the second time we've seen Kirkland get too far out in front of the uh, option man, 
Uh, is this a uh, fault of Kirkland, or would this be just uh, uh, one of those things that perhaps they haven't worked out enough to really uh, know what the quarterback's going to do? Well, this is perhaps so, but it's the duty of the uh, trailing back to watch the quarterback. Now, for example, in this case, Churchage was held up and wasn't able to move any farther forward so that Kirkland must stay back into the outside of that quarterback. Well, very definitely the infraction against the TCU uh, checked up against Nebraska. Ball is spotted at the 36-yard line. Now let's see. Uh, there's the penalty. There's the walk-off finally. Now the five-yard penalty, and the down will... Let's check. It should revolve the forward, and now does. It's like uh, grounding a pass and that you lose the down as well as the penalty yardage. Yes, they got the yardage up to where the uh, pass had been thrown and then were penalized five yards from there and the loss of down. So it's fourth down and a uh, good eight and a half yards. Ball is spotted at the 41 yard line in TCU territory and Ron Kirkland is back in punt formation. Single safety is Frank Horak, but uh, we can watch for this ball to be booted toward the coffin corner as Kirkland aims for the near side. He gets off a nice one, and Horak is going to let it go into the end zone. So a touchback brings the ball out to the Christian 20-yard line, and with 4 minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the first half, it's Nebraska 14, TCU 7. TCU's ball now from their own 20-yard line. Smith is on the wing to the right side. Kent Nix is the quarterback. Nix to the big fullback, and he's hit just about the line of scrimmage. Squirms for a couple of yards. Right tackle Dick Zapp collapses upon him. Give him a pickup of two yards, making it second down and eight yards to go. TCU had that one fine drive, which covered 77 yards, both passing and running. But since that time, they've been bottled up, and before that time, they were pretty much bottled up. Second and eight, the ball at TCU 22, and 4-14 remain before intermission. <coughs> Next. And that's the fullback hold again, close to the 25. It'll be third down and five yards to go. Post trying to slip to the outside. Making the stop is Kay Carson's number 21. Third down and five yards to go for TCU. This post uh, reminds you almost of a halfback, the way he picks his spot. If the hole is covered, he certainly slides and tries to move anywhere he can find daylight. The mark of a good running back. Third down five, three and a half minutes going. Nebraska may get their hands on that ball with still plenty of time to move. Still the wing tee. They've used the, the slot only one time. Second man throws Landon. Landon is going to get the first down, I believe. He really did a fine job of picking his way through. First man to touch him is Finkfile, but he couldn't stop him. And Landon gets first down before Kate Carson and Dick Zapp stop him at the 31. So TCU continues this drive at their own 31-yard line. Mike Kennedy, by the way, led the squad in tackles last year with 26 unassisted and 48 assisted stops. Ted Vactor was second, and the graduated Joe McNulty was third on the defensive list, a linebacker and two defensive backs. Smith on the wing to the right side, and Nix is audible, audible at the line of scrimmage. Landon going wide, cuts back in, finds his hole, still on his feet, and may have another first down as he moves across the 40, makes that the 30. Well, we'll wait and see where they spot it down. It will be the 41-yard line, and it is going to be close for another first down. The officials stop the clock with 2 minutes and 31 seconds to bring out the change from the far side. It's interesting to note that in the matter of playing time, senior tackle Dennis Carlson logged more playing time than any other returning Husker last year. He played 302 minutes. And Freeman White was second, and tackle John Strohmeyer was third. So two offensive players and one defensive player. And it only goes to show that last year the defense didn't let the other team offense have that ball very long. It's going to be second down and a, less than a yard for TCU. The ball at their own 41-yard line. Two minutes and 31 seconds remaining. It will be interesting to see if the Frogs continue this ground attack, which of course eats that clock away, or whether they'll try to go to the air to even things up before halftime. Not much time, slightly more than two minutes remaining. 
This is a tremendous passing situation right here where you have second down with only a couple feet because they can surely pick up their first down on the next down if they need it. Wing on the right side, the rest of the team in tight. As we've said, the only time they've used a slot or a split end they scored on. Landon cuts across the middle, across the 45 to the 47 yard line, and he's got that first down. This boy, Steve Landon, number 21 is a sophomore, voted one of the 11 best Catholic high school players in the nation in 1963. Quite an honor. And we understand, uh, Ollie, that he had uh, offers from over 30 different colleges to go to school, finally chose TCU. I think he's living up to whatever rec uh, recommendations he may have had because he's doing a real good job of running out here today, Mike. First down, the ball at the 47-yard line now. A minute and a half to go, and Nick now will throw. Being chased by Kennedy, hasn't thrown, and he was almost cut to pieces. Langston Coleman might have uh, put Nick out for the rest of the year had he hit him, Ollie. He really took a slice at him. Nick was able to duck under Coleman, but couldn't get away from the rest of the pursuers. And as a result, TCU finds themselves losing three back to their own 44-yard line. Coleman came in high in case uh, Nick did elect to throw, that he would be able to perhaps deflect that ball. Well, with one minute now remaining, there's little doubt that TCU probably will throw. They've split their right end. That's Sonny Campbell. And Landon is to the near side, and Nix is going to throw. Fires into the flat. It's going to be picked off. Touchdown to Landon. There's the easiest touchdown you'll see in a long time. And that was Larry Ramos. And Ramos has just turned to close team. Let's check it again. It might have been uh, Johnson. It was Billy Johnson. And uh, Ollie, a play like that turns the close team into one now that really favors Nebraska, and I imagine this is what it makes Abe Martin say. Mike, this is something that every ball club is going to have to watch, whether this is high school or college or what it would be. You want to score, but you mustn't throw that ball into an area that uh, is left unprotected. In this case, Bill Johnson did a good job. The ball came right to him. There wasn't a soul that had a chance to cover it. It's surprising that Kent Nix, who is a senior two-year letterman, would do such a thing, but he did. Wayne Weber will hold, and Wahols will attempt the extra point, and TCU on a gift touchdown, now finds themselves trailing 20-7. to 7. The kick is up, and it looks good from here. The official signal fires success. With 43 seconds to go, it's 21-7. to 7. Larry Wahols will kick off, and Nebraska now leads 21-7 to 7 over TCU. Here's the approach, and Wahols is kicked. Polak. Whoa! A lot of contact. Marv Mueller hit him, but there were three or four others. And Horak is brought down at the 26-yard line. First down, TCU, 38 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. The Frogs have called timeout to stop the clock. And Bill Johnson scores his first touchdown of the year. Last year, he did not score a touchdown. But uh, with his capabilities, he's liable to score a few more doing just what he did then. Ollie, we were told that Nix has trouble with interceptions. Last year he had 15 of them, and we can see why. He's prone to throw the interception. Yes, he throws, it seems, uh, when he should eat that ball on occasion, when that man out in the secondary is covered. Post up the middle, gained very short yardage, and now TCU doing what Coach H Abe Martin probably wishes they'd done just a moment ago, and that's run out the clock. That should be the last play of the half. Seven seconds, six is a kickoff. And the Huskers, rather than a precarious seven-point lead, will go to the dressing room leading by a score of 21 to 7. Second half action gets underway, and the rain fell during the halftime, but I believe it has let up just a little bit as the third quarter gets underway, and Larry Waffles gets set for Nebraska with TCU receiving at the south end. Here's the kick. It's a good one, and that's Polak down the middle. It takes it at the 10-yard line, coming to the near side. Brought down as it crosses the 25 and the 28-yard line. Now let's watch that kickoff return in slow motion. First down play, the ball resting at the 29-yard line. Horak, the defensive safety for TCU, has run back all of the punts and all of the, well, of course, the kickoff, too. So he's been quite a busy man in that TCU secondary. Kent Nix, whose interception was less than a minute to go in that first half, has put the Frogs into a deep hole, 21-7. They'll try to uh, 
get something going here as it gets to Landon, Landon goes that way. Kennedy's in there, Zapp is in there, Walt Mines is in there, and quite a few red shirts secure the play for no gain at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and about 10 yards to go. Ollie, these halftime statistics given us are rather surprising. Yes, they are, uh, in the rushing department in particular, Mike. In that rushing department in the first half, Nebraska had 59 yards on the ground and Texas Christian had 109 yards. Second down, second man through, that's the wing back, David Smith, and Smith gets about three or four. Jack Isaac is across the 32, about the 33 or 34 yard line. David Smith last year gained 12 yards rushing as a sophomore. So he's over that year, I think, or very close to it in this ball game alone. It'll be third down TCU at about five and a half from the 33-yard line. The thing that we like so far is the fact that that field hasn't really been chewed up too much, even though we've had a steady miss since the game begun. Tarpaulin was on the field, so it was in good shape when this ball game started. This is the fullback coach, and he's going to be shy of the first down by about a yard and a half. Mike Kennedy made the stop, also helping out Langston Coleman. And Ollie, another fine Husker performer, we hope is ready for action next week is defensive end Mike Grace, who yes. was on his way to becoming a very, very fine defensive end last year when he was injured. The people uh, following Nebraska Cornhuskers, of course, were aware last year that Mike Grace and Langston Coleman uh, were doing tremendous jobs, and it will be good to see him back in, even though Hogg's doing a good job today. Mike Grace, by the way, uh, may be ready for action against the Air Force Academy. He probably won't see any today. The officials call time as a new ball is put on the field for this fourth down situation. Donnie Gibbs will do the kicking. The leading rusher in the first half was close with 62 yards. Kirkland was leading rusher for Nebraska 34. Look at the rush there. He gets it away just barely. Fine rush, fair catch called for by Wahoo. Nebraska ball at their own 31 yard line. Ollie, most of the coaches seem satisfied with the return of two platoon football all the way. It did seem rather silly last year to accept a five-yard penalty just to get your punting team in. And this year, that's the remedy. It, uh, it appears to be a lot more logical type of substitution, Mike, to not delay the game and uh, have that kind of thing take place. I, I, I'm pretty sure that most of the coaches and the fans alike will enjoy this this year a little better. Remember, the high schools and the pros play that uh, unlimited substitution, so it just makes sense that colleges would, too. Hash mark on the near side. Bob Churchich has gone all the way. Gives that ball to Solich. Solich has got five, and he has run back hard. You won't see that too many times. As a tackle made by number 18, Dan Jones, from the defensive secondary. Uh, when Solich is hit a good lick, uh, Ali, he'll go down because he only weighs slightly over 160, and the problem is to give him that good lick, not many can do so. It's hard to get a good square shot at him. However, he was held up a little bit that time, tried to cut back in, and the uh, man in the secondary really got to him. Second down five, Solich gaining five on that first maneuver. Freeman White to the near side, the rest of the team in tight. This is Wilson trying to reverse his field and in the line of scrimmage, perhaps one. The TCU defensive line was in there very, very tight that time. Ronnie Nixon was the first man in there, but there was help from Charlie Harrington, a defensive linebacker. And it'll be third down four. Nebraska ball at the wrong 39 yard line. The university coaches have been concerned about the offensive blocking in the interior line. And I think it's a little evident out here at times today, Mike, when we've tried to come down the middle that we haven't been able to do too well against TCU. White against Flip to the near side, the rest of the team in tight. There's that jump pass. Let's see what they rule. They rule in a fumble alley, and TCU is recovered on the 46. That was a very close call. Of course, that's one of those that uh, is a judgment call, and you can't... Uh, Take that away from the official. However, it didn't appear from here that the end of it that had the uh, real full control of that ball when he was hit. Dan Jones was the tackler. Jones hit White very solidly, but once again, it's a matter of judgment, and that's what the official had to use. Not questioning an official because they do a tremendous job. And uh, in his opinion, the ball was guard loose after the catch was made, and TCU is recovered on the Nebraska 46 yard line. Once again, the wing tee. Wide side is to the far side, and this is fullback Post, and he's not afraid to hit in there, hit at the line of scrimmage, ducked that shoulder, ran over Kennedy, and right into the arms of Kay Carson. The game is a part of the two, making a second down and eight yards to go. The University of Nebraska will play the Air Force Academy next Saturday afternoon in Colorado Springs. TCU will open their home season next week against Florida State. 
In fact, the Frogs will play five bowl teams on their schedule this year, and four of them come in a row. Ten and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. TCU faces second down and about seven yards to go. Kent Nick takes. Second man through. Landon. He spins beautifully. Look at him. Stay on his feet as he rips across the 40 to the 36 yard line. Those two sophomore backs from uh, TCU are going to be fine runners. They are fine runners, but in a couple of years, they're really going to have to be reckoned with. It's a young ball club. We've uh, explained this. And yet, Ollie, the one glaring mistake that was made has been by an uh, experienced senior. So you never know about this game of football. These sophomores on both sides have played very, very well. 9.58 remaining to be played, and TCU has a first down in Nebraska's end of the field. That's the wing back, and David Smith is held at the line of scrimmage. He'll gain one, and that's about all. Mike Kennedy again at the bottom of that trial, number 69. Watch for that number a lot, not only when you watch the game on film, but in person. You'll see it a lot on the bottom of a lot of pilots. Second down and nine, with the ball spotted now at the Husker's 35-yard line. We're talking about bowl teams. TCU will play Florida State next week in Fort Worth, the Gator Bowl champion. The following week, they'll take on Arkansas, the Cotton Bowl champion. The following week, Texas Tech, a participant in the Sun Bowl last year. And a little bit later on, the University of Texas. Draw play, close, bringing it loose. Beautiful play by Lynn Sinkbile. Close at the hole, Ollie, and all he had to do was get away from Sinkbile for good yardage, and Lynn didn't let him do it. My and Lynn playing his first year of uh, a lot of football for Coach Bob Devaney. What a job he did on that particular play. It appeared that Post really had it there, too, and uh, Zinkbile almost came out of nowhere to stop him for a very short yardage. End of the ball game now for TCU is Charlie Young, who come in in a power tackle spot, and he's going to replace power tackle Aiden Citra. Campbell to the near side, and the wing back David Smith split to the far side. And Nick. Takes the draw, throws the screen to land in the sophomore. Beautiful! Mike Kennedy left him landing for a loss. Ollie, if Landon gets loose, he's a mighty slippery and elusive runner, but Kennedy really stopped him with that sure tackle down around the knee. Some fine ball tackling out there, some fine tackling out there, Mike. And again, that play was set up to where it might have gone quite a ways had not uh, Kennedy gotten in there. So it's fourth and 12, and Nebraska has shown why last year they were rated so highly in the nation defensively. Completely stopped with TCU offense. And Donnie Gibbs will try to pinpoint the corner now. Fourth down, 750 remaining in the third quarter. Here's Gibbs' punt. It's a floater, and it may go into the end zone. Whoa, it's bouncing. It is into the end zone, just barely. Frankie Solis throwing a block on number 79, Charlie Young, to make sure it went in. First and 10 from the 20-yard line, but hold everything. Here's a red flag being thrown back at the 40-yard line. Ollie, I believe it will be against TCU, however, and the penalty will be uh, man in motion or illegal procedure. The Huskers probably will not take it, and they don't. And I think a wise move is just didn't give the second chance to try to hit the corner, and as long as he didn't on the first try, uh, why let him do it again? From that uh, close a position, why it appears as if uh, they make a real wise choice here. So the Huskers have the ball at their own 20-yard line, first down. TCU had one first down in that drive, then found some fine tackling, stopping it short. They trail 21 to 7. White and Deer both split, block right formation. Kirchick option beautifully to Frankie Solick. Solick is around the corner. Jack Corrack finally drops him to Potter to the pick up a first down to about the 32 or 33. Morak drove him out of bounds, and Solich, if he had perhaps another two or three feet along that sideline, might have broken a long run. However, it was not to be on that particular play. It is a first down, however, on a 13-yard scamper. First and 10. We noticed Coach Bob DeMatty has been all the his centers throughout the day, Ollie, with Kelly Peterson and uh, Duncan Drum coming in and out of the ball game and being used as messengers. You'll remember last year they did that quite a bit with their ends. Now the play. Coming back up the middle and getting nowhere is Harry Wilson. Driven two to the 35, but the Frogs were waiting for it. And all of your observation a moment ago about the interior line blocking has borne out quite well on that particular play. A trap that didn't trap anybody. There probably is one more thing to add to that when Harry Wilson gets the ball. Undoubtedly, uh, uh, some of these people's responsibility is to key on Harry Wilson after the fine showing he made, particularly at the end of the year last year, and most especially in the Cotton Bowl game. So it'll be second down and nine yards to go. Slot right, Jeter split to the left. 
in motion as Wilson fake roll out the pass is complete the right. We'll see if they can get it this time. Dan Jones did the wise, wise thing and rode him out of bounds. Fine catch by Freeman White and another first down for Nebraska. And Ollie, the passing statistics are simply phenomenal. Uh, you have to count that last pass that, that uh, was completed to White, even though it was really fumble. It has to be a completion now. So Texas has completed 9 out of 12 today. And that's quite an average on a day like this. You bet. That's a good average any day. But with that ball being a little wet, like you mentioned, Mike, it's uh, great out here today. Slot left. Ron Kirkland takes a shot in the slot. And here's the draw that we've been talking about. And there he goes. Thank you, Foley. One of the uh, real things about this draw play, too, with, Wilf, uh, with White and uh, Jeter set wide is that they're able to come back in there and show those good downfield blocks. Ollie, this is especially a damaging play because uh, Stolich, when they give him a play, pick your own hole, Frank, he's especially dangerous. Here's Kirkland sweeping for about two. Kirkland moves to the TCU 28 yard line where he's brought down. And this time it's the defensive end on the left end. Doyle Johnson made the stop. This TCU team is a team of proud heritage. They stand just behind Texas in Southwest Conference winning percentage. Since the conference was formed back in 1923, TCU has won 126, lost 96, tied 19, and they've appeared in 11 bowl games with a 4, 6, and 1 record. Second down eight. Churchett near side. There's the pass and it's way over throw. That's the first time this afternoon, Ali, that Bob has been guilty of throwing too much in a hurry. He threw that ball, I think, before he was he should have, uh, and then very, very badly overthrew Freeman White. Yes, that's the first time, actually, when a receiver hasn't been real near that football. So it'll be third down, eight, and a real big play here for the University of Nebraska. And with Sasky comes into the ball, he Freeman White goes out, and he gets a well-deserved hand. Nebraska, of course, has gone to three straight bowl games. They'd like this to be the fourth. Altogether, they've already participated in five bowl games. Search it down the middle, man, wide open. Oh, the shooter. Frankie Solik, and we were talking about he being used as a pass receiver. He was wide open, Ollie, but a little bit of an overthrow by Bob Church. And it's fourth down and eight yards to go. He's having just a little more trouble now than what we noticed earlier. I don't know whether the uh, footballs are getting a little more waterlogged or just what's taking place because it still is drizzling out there all the time, Mike. Nebraska has participated in five bowl games, the Rose, Cotton, Orange, Price, and the Gotham Bowl. Their record is two victories and three losses. With Sapsky's foot to the near side, the rest of the team in tight fourth and eight on a big play. Church is rolling, wants to throw down the middle. It is Yes, the ball is definitely in the air and everything that goes with a uh, pass interference on that particular play. Time out on the field with five minutes and 28 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It's Nebraska 21, Texas Christian quarter. Back to play here in Nebraska first down territory at the TCU 13-yard line. Turkish keep to the 10. Driven back, but point of progress will be allowed as around the 10-yard line. Tackling for Texas Christian that time. Number 61, Gary Cooper, the defensive guard. Nelson helped out of the linebacker spot. Last year, of course, Nebraska's leading scorer was Kent McClellan. The leading scorer returning was Frank Solich, who scored 30 points last year. So the Huskers have second and seven. Call it just inside the 10-yard line. Split both ends. Slot left, Kirkland in the slot. And he takes the quick pick. Sweeping near side. Got blocking and to the five. Spin. And no win. Probably had the wind knocked out of it. And the Huskers 
Ever since the, uh, this game began, it has seemed to us sitting here in the booth that uh, Kirkman's progress has been tremendous in the running game. Extra point now. Wahoo's trying to make it four for four, and he has done so. Four forty seconds remaining in the third quarter. It's the last of 28 keeping you in trouble. job out here on a day like this, but I imagine if they're going to go places and get back in the ball game, if they'll feel they have to. Next to post, and post has a hole across the 40 to the 41. Gain is four. Barnes is in on the stop for Nebraska, and it'll be second down and seven yards to go. Well, Bob Devaney is starting his fourth year at the university, and he's been a bowl participant every year. A graduate of Alma College in Michigan, coming to Nebraska from Wyoming, where he's compiled a very fine record of 35 victories, 10 losses, and five ties. Sonny Campbell splits to the near side, wing back Dave Smith to the far side, and the strong side is to the right side for TCU, post hitting up the middle for only about a yard and a half. Boy, you can count the numbers. Dick Zapp was in there, number 70. John Stromeyer, Lynn Sinkfile, Tuppy Barnes, all in there. Less than 350 remaining in this third quarter of play. Nebraska out on top, 28 to 7. Huskers led at the end of the first quarter, 14 to nothing, at the half, 21 to 7. And now they've made that a 48 to 7 lead. TCU with a winning record. They hope they last year had a four and six conference record, or a four and six record overall. This is Nick and a quick pitch coming to Landon. And he is crazy tackle now. Mike, it's good to see uh, a play or two ago when Ted Baxter came back in the ball game on defense, which means that he is just about ready, apparently, for to assume his role in the defensive unit. Golly, they've been worrying about Ted, but uh, he's in the ball game now, so apparently uh, on a wet field, Coach Danny uh, doesn't feel like uh, the knee is bad enough to prohibit him from playing. That last tackle made by Carson. Johnson comes off the field to play. Here's the punting situation. Snap to Gibbs and he gets it away. Nice spiral. Back to calls for a fair catch at the 30 yard line. Nebraska's ball at that point. First down and 10 yards to go. In two weeks from today, Nebraska will be back home and opening defense of their big eight title against Iowa State University. And Iowa State Alley, always a very hard hitting ball club, well drilled in fundamentals regardless of depth. They always put on a good show for the folks. Uh, on the Nebraska side, whether it's at Ames or here, and I'm sure it'll be a fine ball game, but we'll be here to film it in two weeks. Iowa State's always a real good, tough, fundamentally sound ball club. They're not deep enough, as you say, often to do a good job. Here's Wilson springing loose. Borak makes the stop, but not before Wilson moves to the 37-yard line, where second down, three yards to go. C.D. Shabby, who is one of the top sophomores in the Southwest Conference, warming up on the sideline, and Ollie, it could be that he'll replace Kent Nix to get his baptism of fire in the uh, collegiate wars as soon as TCU gets their hands on the ball again. Draw play. No! Beautiful play. Dropped by Jeter. I can see why Jeter was wide open, because I, too, was faked out. It looked like Solich, but Church had threw it back beautifully and fired a strike to Jeter. And as you've mentioned, perhaps that wet ball is starting to take its toll. Solich is not only a great runner of that draw play, he's one of the most fantastic fakers on the draw play that I've ever seen. Ollie, I saw 
Chapman's going to play a lot of football. He's uh, in the same position a lot of other boys on the university squad. He happens to be running in back of a real fine football in little Frankie Kolich. Ball spotted at the 45, and the Huskers now will try it again, first down. To the near side, Freeman White. To the far side is Frankie Solich. Church is looking for Solich and fires the ball. And it's Out of your head to hand, the Huskers that was coming up when Frankie Solich immediately stationed himself on the wing before the snap of the ball. And sure enough, after the fake, why they threw the bomb, and I'm sure they're going to see that again this year. Uh, fine coverage by TCU, however, and they had Frankie uh, covered all the way. Second down and 10 yards to go. This one year of experience has shown that Bob Church is not afraid to throw that ball from almost anywhere on the field. Yes, uh, we think, or they think in order to have a real fine offense, Nebraska is going to have to do more throwing. It looks like with uh, him throwing and the receivers he has, they'll be able to do it this year. Back to pass, Church is over the middle. It is incomplete. Little doubt now that that ball is rather wet. That's the first time that Freeman White has dropped the ball. And a third down and 10 yards to go, and Nebraska has gone to the air. 55 seconds remain in the third period. You mentioned that there is hardly a breeze at all, but what breeze there is is favoring the Huskers now. It's a little bit out of the north. It is not a cold day, it's just a very wet day. Football season is only one day old, Ollie, by the time the folks watch this, and already Alabama's been upset. Churchitz again, looking, falling down. Well, we've seen three offensive plays where the weatherman was the best defensive man that the TCU had. And it'll be fourth down with a long 17 yards to go, and Ron Kirkland is going to have to put his toe into this uh, particular ball. And it'll be interesting when TCU takes over that T.D. Savage, who was an all-conference selection and quarterback on the freshman squad last year at TCU, will take over. Ollie, they think so much of this boy that he's also worked out of halfback in preseason drills. They figure he's a very fine runner as well as an exceptional passer. He apparently is just a good all-around athlete to be able to handle all those chores, and we may uh, yet see some more throwing done by TCU when he gets in the ballgame. This will be the last play of the quarter, and Kirkland puts his foot into it, and Horak goes back. It's going to be over his head, but he takes it. Comes back up the middle. If he can get a block somewhere, he may go. Nice tackle. I believe it was Kirkland. Let me see. Ron Kirkland was who stemmed the tide and finally ushered Horak out of bounds and into Abe Martin's lap at midfield. And it's first down and 10 yards to go at midfield for TCU. And at the end of the third quarter, our score now stands Nebraska 28 and the Horn Frog 7. Kent Next comes back into the ball game, even though TV Shabby had been warming up, so the regular backfield is in there for the Frogs. And they've gone all the way. There's been no substitute. Next is back to throw down the middle. Oh, nice try by Sonny Campbell, who had Ted Baxter beaten by three or four steps. And if the pass was thrown a little bit lower, it would have been a completion. As it is, the play goes for naught. We bring it back to midfield, where it'll be second down and 10 yards to go. Next week, TCU against Florida State, as we told you. The Air Force Academy will host Nebraska. On October 2nd, the Huskers will face Iowa State in Lincoln. And on October 9th, Wisconsin comes calling. On the 16th, it'll be at Kansas State. 23rd, it'll be Colorado here. And we'll give you the rest of the schedule as we can. Now the play, and next going to the air, trying to get the frogs back in the ballgame, throws it away. Right into the yard of Bill Johnson, and Johnson returns to his own 37-yard line. And it'll be first and 10 for TCU at that time. Ron Fogemeyer. This 26 and 28 sometimes gets confusing to me, Ollie, and it was Ron who made the interception. First down. I, uh, Mike, that was a little difficult to tell whether that was an interception or whether that was a completion. The ball was shown right down the middle of the field to Fogemeyer. Ollie Fred did is coming to the ball game now for the University of Nebraska. And the fine hand, I'm sure, was for Fred making his first varsity appearance in almost a year. Yes, I think the fans are anxious to see what Fred will be able to do now when he's trying to come back. 
Hand off to Kirkland. Picks his ball beautifully and gets to the midfield strike. It'll be a first down for the University of Nebraska at midfield. The clock stops 13 and a half minutes before the end. Little doubt now that Nebraska will even this series at a game apiece. They'll play in Lincoln next year and the following year down in Fort Worth. This being a three-game series. Contract calling 465, 66, 1967. Fred Duda again to Kirkland. This time Ron is going to be stopped short of the line of scrimmage and will lose maybe a half yard. Certainly not more than that. Call it second down and leave the yardage at 10 as the ball is spotted on the hash mark from the far side. We probably will see quite a few new faces and new jerseys in that Nebraska lineup. Split the right end. Duda to the fullback, Keith Patman, and Patman is across midfield of the 47. So the gain is about three, and it'll be third down, and let's call it seven yards to go from the point on 47-yard line. TCU certainly the breeding ground of some great athletes. The names of Sammy Barr, Davey O'Brien, and Jim Swink combined. Other names like Lindy Berry, Bruce Alford. Great names from a fine football school. Buddha fires, knocked up in the air, intercepted by TCU. Once again, a lot of juggling. The ball was tipped up two or three times and finally intercepted by the Frogs. And as soon as we get the numbers, it looks like E.A. Gresham, the fine sophomore linebacker, and it is. And TCU takes over first down at their own 45-yard line. 13 minutes remaining in this fourth and final period. The Huskers lead 28-7. And number 33, T.D. Shelby, has entered the ball game. It'd be interesting to see how he does. And a handoff going to the second man, too, and that was the fullback post. Second, next that Steve Landon. Landon is hit at the line of scrimmage, gains one. It'll be second down and nine yards to go. Well, football season underway. We certainly urge all of you that can support your local high school and get to see as many of those Friday night games as you can throughout the season. Second down play, Dave Smith on the wing to the left side, the wing tee, line balance. Whoa! Sophomore Shabby, I think, drew out a little bit too quickly, and as he did so, he found that ball floating free in the air and finally fell on it, losing two back to the 44-yard line, where it'll be now third down and approximately 11 yards to go. Ali, you can certainly tell a quarterback who uh, is a sophomore because uh, uh, he just has secured himself at the present time. Yes, he, uh, he'll have to kind of take his knocks around in there for a while to get his feet on the ground, and uh, he surely is a fine enough athlete that pretty soon he will recover. He's going to throw his first college pass, perhaps. Nope, he's going to run. Stutter step clears him across midfield to the Nebraska 48-yard line. Stutter away shy of the first down. Clock stops with 11 and a half minutes remaining to be played. And they spot it now at the 48-yard line, fourth down and about five yards to go. That's an obvious sophomore mistake, too, Mike. Uh, actually, they looked like a little running room for the boys, so he chose to run. But what uh, you have to do is to make an awful lot of yards before you pick up that person's hand. Now it's uh, to force them into a punny situation. Where had he been able to pick a receiver and still throw it, they might have gotten their person's hand. This is Gibbs again. He's done all the punting today. Gets his kick away. Fair catch called for by number 46, Ted Baxter. So Nebraska has possession at their own 19-yard line as Fred Duda re-enters the game for the University. Holly, the student section, in fact, all of the rooters for Nebraska take a lot of pride in that uh, defensive unit. Yes, and now, uh, we know that before the year is over that uh, certainly this 
defensive unit is going to get the ball to Nebraska in good field position many, many times. Flip the right end. Buddha handing that ball off to Chapman, the fullback, and Chapman crosses the 20 to the 21. Making the stop, G.A. Gresham, linebacker over there, and helping out with Terry, the defensive end. So it'll be second down, and let's call it eight yards to go then, with the ball resting at the Cornhusker 21 yard line. Vita has gone out of the ball game. Wisnaski is one of the ends. Vita slides to the right side, keeps, finally takes it out, and Ron Kirkland had to go behind him to make that pickup of that pitch out, but he was able to put it in. And it's a first down with Horak tackling. That's bad business, Ali, because if the pitch out eludes Kirkland with the flow of the action going forward, it could have been a TCU recovery in uh, Nebraska, all around the Nebraska 20 yard line. So here's the first down try now for the University of Nebraska with 9 minutes and 40 seconds remaining to be played in the ball game. Duda to Chapman. Chapman gets four. It'll be second down, and we'll call it about six yards to go. Mike, there's a young man entering the game now I've been anxious to see. A uh, three-footed halfback, they tell me, by the name of Ben Gregory, has just replaced Harry Wilson. Gregory, five foot 11 inches tall, a sophomore from Uniontown, Pennsylvania, 199 pounders. Buda back to throw. Fires, intercepted. Nice set. That's Jones. Could be a touchdown. Still still driving it all the way to the Nebraska seven yard line. The pass is intercepted by E.A. Gresham, Ali, and he uh, had the presence of mind as he was going down to flip it to Johnny Richards, and Richards it was who carried it down to the seven yard line. And it's point blank range down for Texas Christian with just less than nine minutes to go. That was real fine thinking on his part. There were, uh, there was the people around him that he could give that ball to and use others for interference in the running. So it'll be first down and 10 yards to go for TCU. I said the seven, I back it up now to the 12 yard line. And the Shabby is back in the ball game. He'll be at quarterback. Smith on the wing to the right side. Let's see if the Frogs will get it in. Landon, the ball carrier, making his cut and fighting his way to the six. TCU fans certainly can look forward to an interesting year, not only this year, but next year. We've seen some fine sophomores this afternoon, Ali, and uh, Gresham, and uh, uh, the three uh, running backs. Uh, we've seen Post and Landon, and now uh, Shabby. Campbell comes back next year, so... We've got some fine-looking young ball yeah. players, Mike. Not many seniors on this squad. I think we counted eight. Up the middle in that sophomore post, and he's going to be very close to the first down at about the two or three yard line. We'll wait till they unpile the feet. The officials looking over to the far side, and they're going to call timeout to measure. Seven minutes and 51 seconds remaining to be played in the ball game. Time is called as they measure. Well, we have a chance. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about Abe Martin of TCU, who's currently in his 13th year as head coach. He took over in 1953 and was made the athletic director in 1963. Martin graduated from TCU in 1932, where he was a star in. His overall record is 66 wins, 51 losses, and seven ties, with two outright conference championships and a share of a third and four bowl appearances. By the way, every assistant coach is a TCU graduate. Oh, there's a lot of thinking that says that uh, you don't get enough mixture of viewpoint when every coach has been uh, drilled under the same system. This a lot of times I think is true, but many times these people have been out in other systems and then have returned to their home school, giving them a flavor of all factors. Landon scores the Texas Christian. Steve Landon, the sophomore, goes in with third and inches to go. The score now reads the University of Nebraska 28 and TCU 13. Coming into the ball game now, Bruce Alford, who last year was 10 for 10 in the extra points department, adding four out of nine field goals, 22 points. He's into the ball game, and Gibbs will hold for him as he tries to tack on his 14th point. This boy has never missed an extra point in college play. He's a junior this year. 
He's the son of an All-American at TCU back in the 1930s. Ball is down, and Alfred's kick is perfect. So with seven minutes and 42 seconds left to play in the ball game, it's Nebraska 28 and TCU 14. Here's Alfred now, making that Gibbs, I'm sorry. Gibbs is the one who beats the ball, and it's going to be taken by Kirkland. It looked like it was going to go out of bounds, but he was able to get that ball before it did. And Kirkland returns across the 25 to about the 32 or 33 yard line. Nebraska's ball, seven and a half minutes remaining to be played, and they have it at their own 34 yard line. 28 to 14. I think a big surprise in that we've had so many touchdowns scored on a day like this. Kirkich back in the ball game, giving to Ron Kirkland, who jacked the 35 to about the 36 or 37. So it'll be second down and eight yards to go. I think Mike, uh, Coach Devaney, has a lot of respect for this TCU ball club and their ability to score because with the lead of 28 to 14 and only seven minutes left to play, he has put the complete first offensive unit back in the ball game. Kirkland now comes out, and we'll see who lines up at that left halfback spot when Nebraska comes to the attack. Frankie Solich is in at a halfback spot, and he's in the slot to the left. Deer split, Freeman White split. Second down and eight. Option play. Church is very wisely held on. There was a fine piece of defensive work by the end, uh, uh, Larry Perry. I'm sure I make that Doyle Johnson, number 82. And Church has really never had an opportunity to get rid of that ball. Third down, let's call it about seven yards to go now. And the ball resting at the 37-yard line. And the Cornhusker is leading 28 to 14. They've never trailed. TCU pressed 14 to 7. But with less than a minute remaining in the first half, the interception killed him. Church has threw it away against the far sideline, and it's fourth down. With Johnson, uh, picked, uh, with White on him down and over, or out, toward the sideline, the pass was thrown away. 6.05 remaining, and TCU will get their hands on the ball. Hunting situation, Kirkland will kick, and Horak in a single safety. Snap. Almost blocked, he got it away. Horak's gonna try to run it back. And gets to the 45 yard line. Horak was in dangerous territory there as he fielded that punt with two or three red shirts standing around him, but he was able to field it on the move, and therefore didn't set himself up as a target, and was able to return to the 45. And we have a whole new offense coming into the ball game for TCU. A lot of white shirts in that ball game. So Coach Abe Martin will take a look at some of the second boys. We'll have Gordon Knees and Joe Sherrill at end. Harry Fowler and Charlie Young at tackles. Norm Reeves and Dale Johnson at the guard. Don Ray at center. Shabby will be at center. A uh, quarterback like that. We'll check the rest of them just as soon as we can. Ernie Bayer is the fullback. And Shabby tripped over his own man as he tried to get out of there and making sure that he went no further was one of the Cornhuskers. Appeared to be Lincoln Trinkbile. Lost on the play of five, making it second down and 15 yards to go. Checking that backfield for Texas Christian, Shabby will be at the quarterback spot. The fullback is Ernest Bayer, who alternated regularly last year and is one of the four captains in the TCU team this year, but he's not played at all today. Charlie McKissick is split to the near side, a wing back, and Shabby throws and gets his first completion. It will be spotted at about the 48 yard line, and Gordon Knees is the receiver. So the ball is spotted at the 48 yard line, where TCU now faces third down and seven yards to go. Less than five minutes remain, and Nebraska on their way to Coach Bob Devaney's 29th victory here at the university. Third down, seven. Shabby's back to throw. Fires way overshooting his man. Intended for Gordon Neese once again, down and over. But a red flag has gone down. The preliminary signal, however, is against the Horn Frog. So I'm sure Nebraska will refuse the penalty and take the ball. 28-14. TCU 
TCU scoring one pass on one pass play and one running play. Landon got the second touchdown and Sonny Campbell got the first touchdown. Freeland White has scored twice for the University of Nebraska. Gibbs is in the ball game to punt. 419 remaining. Nobody back to safety. Here's Gibbs. He's going to punt it, though. Now Solix is calling for the fair catch. And he's got it. So it'll be first down and 10 yards to go for the University of Nebraska. Ball resting on their own 17-yard line. Four minutes and 10 seconds left to play in the fourth and final period. The very definitely, Ali, an interesting season coming up for the University of Nebraska because they've shown today that uh, that good defense is still there and the offense is a little bit more wide open than it was last year. It appears that that's what it's going to be, and uh, with this win today, certainly uh, Nebraska will still be on top until somebody unseats them. Churchitz is in the ball game. Breaking into the secondary, Keith Chapman, and Chapman across the 40 to about the 42-yard line. An excellent game. 25 yards picked up on that sprint by fullback Keith Chapman. Ollie, the opponents are going to have to look for Solich, the speedster, and Chapman, the blockbuster, it looks like. It's going to be a fine one-two fight. Chapman's a real strong boy and a real strong runner, and he moves around pretty well when he got out the secondary there. First down. Church has been to Wilson sweeping. Making the stop was Gabe Gresham, number 55. Borak came up from a defensive safety spot and also brought the ball carrier down. The gate on the play is five, making it second down and five yards to go, and now only three minutes remain in the ball game. Freeman White split to the far side, and a lot of the fans starting to go home. Wilson to the near side. Red flag. Gresham made the stop. It'll be close for a first down if the play is allowed to stand up, but 15 yards for holding will be tacked on against the courthouse. They're stopping the clock with 2 minutes and 40 seconds remaining to be played. Ollie would like to say support the Cornhuskers this year, but there's not much way they can support them because every seat is sold out. I think that the state has pretty well told the Cornhuskers that they will support them in every way that they can possibly think of, financially, in attendance, on a rainy day, any other way, as long as the Cornhuskers do such a great job as what they've been doing the last few years. Ollie, it's the case whether you're there. Uh, whether you're uh, a football team or a baseball team or a basketball team, uh, if you've got an exciting winning ball club, you're going to draw people. That's the way it is, all right. The uh, fans are fickle. They come strong when you've got the good one, and they tend to relax when you don't. That's Churchill's beautiful pitch out, and that one was on the up and up. That one was picked out to Kirkland just right. Ron held his spot that time, Ollie, just perfectly. And uh, if any player would have tended to get him out in front of the ball here, that would, because Churchill put a lot of that running down to by himself before he put the fly to Kirkland, be packed on an extra five yards. And the penalty's been wiped out, and the Cornhusker is scrimmaged down from the TCU 45-yard line. Fine play. 2-10 remaining, and perhaps Nebraska looking for another touchdown. Certainly the fans across the way calling for it. Two minutes remaining now. White split to the far side. Churchill. <laughs> but you saw it. That's Charlie Winters, another sophomore is into the ball game, number 44. Winters, a six-foot sophomore from Joliet, Illinois. Lots has been said about uh, Winters. He, uh, they think quite highly of him. As a runner or a caller, Ollie. Duda's in the ball game. Duda to Winters, look at him run. First down to Boston at the TCU 25-yard line. One minute and 15 seconds remaining in the count. Huskers want to score again. Ollie, I know, noticed that Coach Yates Martin getting some of the first-team defense back in and some of the whiter jerseys are coming out of there. 
Certainly 28 to 14 is not as bad as 35 to 14 in anybody's book. One minute remaining to be played, 25-yard line, Nebraska's ball. Buda. Keeping to the 20, to the 15, and ushered out of bounds to stop the clock with 51 seconds remaining at about the 15-yard line. It's nice to see Buda back in uh, with the ball club moving again on his two other appearances. He had some problems, but he seems to have regained himself a little bit here, and the ball club's once again on the move. Spotted at the 14-yard line, then, and once again, Abe Martin substitutes one of his first-line defensive ball players. Linebacker Bobby Nelson is coming into the ball game. And Dick Westbrook comes out. First down, 51 seconds remaining. Buda to the right side to Charlie Winters, who's hit at the 13. Only a yard gain that time. 45 seconds remaining. Nebraska has not called a timeout, but you can let them run these plays in a hurry. At the 13, second down, nine yards to go. Twenty-five seconds remaining. Buda Keith pitches out. And it's going to be about the five or six or seven yard line with 22 seconds remaining. Carrying the ball that time for the Huskers is number 22, Ben Gregory. Kenny Brock, number 40, is into the ball game for Nebraska. 22 seconds remain. Third down play. Nebraska needs two from the seven-yard line. Duda. Hurt is one man. Hurt is two men. He's to the goal line. He didn't make it. 14 seconds remaining. That's the Duda we saw two years ago, Ollie. That's the Duda we expected to see, and certainly I think before the year's over, he and Shea Pitch and uh, possibly even Wayne Weber will give Nebraska the finest quarterbacking crew of any place in the nation. First and goal to go, 13 seconds in. Holly, this is what makes a game like this a little more exciting. Uh, Certainly there's nothing casual about the end of this ball game. Not at all, Mike. And if you look around the stands, uh, they still seem to be full of people. There have been very few people leave this ball game. 28 to 14 in favor of the Cornhuskers, but they have first and goal at the one foot line. And we'll see who gets the honor of scoring the touchdown, if there is one. Timeout, of course, taken to stop the clock. The Husker is taking full advantage of the entire timeout. We still await for time to be put in. Now we're ready. Here it is. 13 seconds remain. First and goal to go. Brunt, Winters, and Ben Gregory, the top of the team. Duda's the man under. Duda carries, and Duda may score. He pitches out. Kenny Brunt is the boy who scored it. Hometown Coban, Nebraska. Ken is a 5 for 10 inch sophomore. And it's 34 to 14. Nine seconds remain. That's typically good offense. Uh, they, uh, Texas Christian definitely thought with a foot to go or a yard to go in there that Nebraska would be coming down the middle. And I fooled them just a little bit to have Nebraska come wide on them. Blanc is going to attempt the extra point now. Ball gets away, and Blanc just falls on it. So with nine seconds remain, it's Nebraska 34, Texas Christian University 14. Now the kick by Duncan Drum, which should end the ball game. And here's Horak again. He's really been a busy boy at that safety position. Coming to the near side, up the middle, crossing the 25 and the 30, three seconds, and the clock is stopped with four seconds remaining to be played. Four seconds, time out on the field, and it's 34, Nebraska, 14, TCU. Okay. One more play remaining, four seconds to go, and Nixon's going to throw, oh, draw play to Post. 
and both six riders got it up. Of course, Jerry Murphy made the problem. Also helping out was number 33, Barry Alvarez. And this ball game is history. And Ali, a very auspicious beginning. Nebraska fans have been used to seeing the Cornhuskers warm up with one-sided victories over South Dakota State and the University of South Dakota. And although the score indicates one-sided today, I think this ball game will do the Cornhuskers so much more good than in preseason uh, or in uh, half-season openers. TCU is not a great ball club, Mike, but any time you play somebody out of the Southwest Conference, you know you're playing a good ball club. And in today's game, I think the University of Nebraska has shown us that they left off, or they started in this year where they left off last year. And, and I know the, the entire coaching staff, the boys themselves, uh, all expect to have a great year. And, and it appears to me like uh, we could be in for viewing some real good football in the 1965 season. Certainly, Ali, we are blessed with a very fine home schedule, and uh, we'll be filming all of them. And, and you've got teams like uh, Iowa State and Wisconsin and Colorado and Kansas and Oklahoma coming to Memorial Stadium. You can't ask for much more. And, of course, the Missouri game, which we'll be watching down in Columbia. So I don't know uh, what more we could ask for as far as bringing the fans tremendous football this year. No, there should be some real fine football games in uh, all those that you just mentioned. And, and uh, certainly we're looking forward to doing the telecasts, and we ought to just have a, a real good year. That wraps it up. We hope you've enjoyed our telecast as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you. Our final score again, Nebraska 34, TCU 14. We'll see you, of course, in two weeks with the film coverage of the Nebraska-Iowa State game. Now, Mike Trepp speaking for Holly Smith, along with Glenn May, Bob Parkerson, saying thanks for your time this time. Till next time, so long, everybody.